Hi friends. Good evening, good morning, good afternoon, depending upon where you are joining me from. Hope to talk with all of you today about the career prospects in the semiconductor industry. I had recently recorded a video, perhaps it has not yet been released, about how India can get into semiconductor industry. I mean, India can expand its presence in the semiconductor industry. So today, of course, when India does expand, I think recent indications are the government is quite committed to make uh, the necessary investments, to attract investments, to incentivize companies to start uh, opening the semiconductor uh, foundry operations here in India. So if, if all that happens, all the attention semiconductor industry is garnering, so I think then comes how will we get the necessary skilled engineers, skilled uh, people to operate those things, right? So we are talking about the career prospects. Now, first, let's talk about what is the uh, prospect of semiconductor industry in general. See, the way market is going, I mean, there was a time I, I, I should share with you when I did my first uh, or second, first startup was a hardware device which had many semiconductor uh, chips in it. And uh, of course, we used to sell the board, assembled board to the clients. It was a RAID controller uh, or a storage controller. which used to go in the servers. Now, the second one that I did, IVVT, that was to design, that had a storage networking processor. A very complex device in those days, I think it was done in 60 micron, that was considered to be a very uh, cutting edge technology. And uh, it had millions and millions of chips. It had six, seven, eight processors in it. And pretty much the entire thing that you see in a computer, like in your iPhone and all, everything in, in a chip and a lot more. So at that time, I remember, I mean, it was, it took a fairly long time for us to come out with our first chip, a lot of money we ended up spending. And after that, I realized, man, I'm done. I mean, in fact, it's not me, but when we started IVVT, there were about four or five storage networking processor companies, but none of uh, the, those companies had a huge upside at the, at the time of the exit. So everybody pretty much had given up on semiconductor, you know, at that time. And Everybody wanted to go into software, so did I. But now, I think all these years with the advent of uh, mobile, I mean, computer in your hand, smartphone, and, you know, uh, the, the artificial intelligence and IoT and everything that is happening around us, now you, you begin to realize that chips, more chips are needed for us to exist in this world. Your car has a chip. Your roti maker, you know, there are some chapati makers, some of you know from India, who are from India. Chapati makers have a chip. Recently, I saw a chai maker. That also has a chip. Of course, my favorite Nespresso machine has a chip and some sensors in it. So I can go on and on. Every single thing that we have in our house has a semiconductor device. Now, more and more such things are going to come because more decision making would be made by the devices more intelligent devices in other words would be coming down the pipe which means you need more chips you need more foundries you need more investment to build those foundries and you need skilled folks to operate all that so i think hopefully you're convinced in case you you know there are some people who are not yet convinced i'm i'm sure if you listen to this you'll be convinced that the job prospects are back you know uh, back again in in this industry so i think it's a good time to be in the semiconductor industry now let's talk about the questions or the kind of topics we want to cover today uh, if i i think uh, what is the job role of a semiconductor engineer that's the first query i'm going to cover now see this semiconductor just like any other software or hardware any other industry there's a plethora of jobs so there is a front end design of a chip that is typically done by a computer engineer. They design the whole logic that goes inside the chip. And I used to, when, in my, when I had a real job of a design engineer, that's what I used to do. Front end design, there are some tools available. You use those tools to put that design as a functional thing 
that later on the software that you're using i mean the vhdl or verilog or cadence software that was the name of the company at that time i don't i'm sure those are still around and that company used to convert the design we would make into a you know in in, in its own language into a design which can actually get into verification mode so front end design then comes like in the software you have uh, people who write the software and then people who do qc so then there are chip verification engineers they verify that design they write their own i mean they will you know talk to the designer to see how the function how the chip should perform and based on the expected performance they will keep they will create verification scripts you run those verification scripts so that is the second part that's in a way middleware you can say and then of course the whole chip is laid out now the softwares are there which lay out the chip into a specific die the die is sent to the foundry then when the foundry there are, there are a whole set of engineers there other than the front design front end design engineer almost every one that you had here a verification layout all those kind of people are there in the foundry also and then foundry goes beyond just the layout they have to take the layout and then they have to fabricate it so you have the fabrication engineers there and then they fabricate it once it is fabricated then you have some technicians who are kind of in a clean room environment with the hazmat suits they operate build the chip and then when the chip comes out you again have a different kind of qc so there are some engineers needed for that as well again expected behavior of the chip and some basic you know uh, tests they all have to run before the chips are delivered to the company or to the customer who are that that may be so you can see a plethora of jobs for every chip that comes to uh, you know these days uh, shortage of chips is creating shortage of cars i mean who had who would have thought an industry that we had stopped paying attention to would all of a sudden start gaining attention because you can't get your favorite cars i mean i myself i'm one of the guys who's suffering from it i wanted to order my favorite 2021 mercedes s550 or i think 580 this time and i was told that wait for six months i mean we are taking i was told we are taking summer orders now summer 22 orders now so i mean i'm sure it is you know the situation is same with every manufacturer because chips are in short supply and because i think you know various seasons will not go into that so coming back to this so you can see that you know there are uh, set of there are set of jobs at different stages of the chip design chip layout chip verification fabrication then final qc and all so there are you know good opportunities and typically i think if you go to the next uh, set of things the qualification in most of these uh, jobs that is required a front end design since i was kind of part of the front end design always so that is kind of more dear to me there the design is that you know you do require good system level understanding i would say how what the chip should you know i mean what the chip what functions chip performs like a software design you have some user stories and you have to create the design based on those user stories right and the rest of them of course you know people all of them have to be computer engineers computer science guys they are not i mean they focus more on the software side of the house in hardware it is mostly computer engineering or electronics or electrical engineer folks who are more suited for that now one set of jobs actually i forgot to mention earlier every chip requires certain types of softwares for it to function uh, properly for it to function in the desired way now the chip that we did at ivivity several years ago it had multiple processors it was like a system on a chip they call soc those are the kind of category of chips they the people design most of the chips that we see are like system on design system on a chip the entire system is on a chip so it had multiple processor it had so it every processor had certain micro code that was running inside the chip so there are micro code uh, designers or micro code writers they are guys who actually write these days it is 
there is an operating system that is running inside the chip. Some of you who are in that industry may have heard of ARM. ARM is perhaps the most popular um, processor these days, and ARM has its own, um, you know, its own operating system. But some people do run, uh, you know, uh, Linux or or BSD or you know, embedded Linux or embedded BSD and all that. So they, there are microcode engineers who write the microcode for that system which is inside the chip. So that is one level of software engineers are needed. Then other is when the chip is put on a board or chip has to interact with, let's say, like in case of iPhone, you see there's a screen, there are some sensor, there are cameras. So it means there's more than one chip in that, in, in, inside the iPhone. So there is a software that controls that chip's interaction with other things on the board or other things which the device overall device has or in, a, in case of a car the chip is controlling various functions so there is a software i was reading today about ola's factory or ola delay in delivery of e-scooters from ola's factory and they were talking about this flaws in their software at the beta level that you know when the moment you cross 110 kilometer per hour speed it comes to st it's a stall it's a scooter stalls i mean realize i mean chip and software that controls the chip so important for the functioning of even a simple scooter e-scooter to me in all these things that we're talking about e-scooter is one of the simpler device in my view but of course it has motor and all these other things but i mean software is very important so software engineers are also needed again that is a microcode embedded microcode software that makes the chip interact with everything else and then there may be a larger system level software as well so you know all these people so software may in software you could have computer science guys but in hardware computer engineering electronics or electrical engineering skills are essential let's i think we can go to the next query that uh, how can you enhance your career in the semiconductor industry well you know unfortunately most of the <clears throat> i would say colleges college curriculums do not give you in depth understanding of chip design at least it was not like that when i studied and i don't think we also interview people though in my company's emsys we don't have any chip designers now but we do have some embedded software folks now and I've seen that most of the college courses, curriculums, they, do, they, they might teach you, uh, you know, the, the, uh, the firmware and, and microcode writing and all that, but not the hardware design. So typically, I think this, this, kind, this is the kind of skill that you will learn during your internship. So if you join one of those companies, if you have bent for that, if you have done a project, I mean, I, for example, when I studied 30 plus years ago, my final year project was to build a device for de deaf and dumb people so the device had hardware so you can say that you know i already had the bent for designing hardware so that's how i got into the job which so if you if devices if how to i mean you know a lot of people these days learn to write software and ai algorithms and uh, machine learning and all that but if you are bent for if you if you if building a device to solve a new problem that has not been solved before if that attracts you you are the right person for semiconductor industry and i would suggest doing internship in one of these companies there are many companies intel amd cisco i mean apple has acquired so many chip companies these days that apple perhaps very soon will become bigger than many of these other companies because how many devices they sell earlier apple used to use qualcomm uh, cpus in their iphone and intel cpus in their macbook pros and now they have switched their entire line to their internally developed chips so like that i think google does a lot of chips and i remember once we were talking to google even the google server farms google cloud or, or whatever um, google builds to process their data all of that, all those systems, the chips of those systems are designed internally at Google. So Amazon does the same thing. So Facebook does many of those things in house. So all these companies which we see as software companies actually 
do have their own hardware design because they want specific functions to be performed by the hardware. So you can really, I know some of my friends who did PhD in semiconductor, they got jobs at Amazon or, you know, Facebook or Apple and all that. So there are companies you wouldn't find, I mean, Tesla, I mean, has so many of, uh, you know, these, I would say, uh, you know, these semiconductor uh, folks inside their company who are designing the next level of uh, you know, your chips. So I think you just look around, go to all the portals and you will find. But to enhance your career, unfortunately, like software, you may not find too many courses around being offered in the local colleges or around you. But I'm sure there are many online courses available, though I have not taken any. The best way to learn is that doing a project yourself or doing a project as part of your internship in a company. Right? Hope I have answered your question. Let's go to the next one. Where can one find employment as a semiconductor engineer? I think I have covered some of that already. Just look around, go to these job portals and you will find the list of all these companies and you will be really surprised to see. I think I was surprised a few years ago when a friend of mine who did PhD from UMitch in semiconductor, he found a job at Amazon. He actually, his uh, PhD thesis was about uh, putting some AI algorithm inside a chip. So no wonder. You know, Amazon hired him in a heartbeat. So I think all these big companies and only thing I would say is that usually you won't find smaller companies. In software, you'll find companies of even two, two people in a garage can do software company, right? In hardware, it is still a bit capital intensive. So smaller companies will not be, you know, I mean, I would say, dare to enter the hardware business of any kind, especially chip design business. Though I have seen some chip design services companies, which are smaller in size, but still you need certain investment that is required in buying the software, that very law cadence, all those softwares, which actually do, do all the processing, uh, backend processing to convert your logic into actually a fabricable chip. So it is uh, investment heavy industry still. And uh, but so look for a decent sized company, but you will find quite a few. Still, I would say between software and, and chip design, software may be 10x of chip design jobs around you, but jobs are beginning to show up now. Let's go to the next one. <clears throat> Please make a detailed video on how people age 24 working in nine to five can achieve financial freedom before the age 30. It is a demand of so many people. Well, you know, it's a very good question, tech wizard. That, see, financial freedom is a function of your needs and your savings, right? I will take your, you know, suggestion on making a detailed video because that in itself is a big topic and I would love to make that. How to achieve financial freedom, I would say, why before age 30, whenever, but how to achieve financial freedom in your life. And I think I'll, I'll make a video on that. I hope my team is listening and they will, you know, give me the cues next time I'm recording something new. And I will definitely take you or take that uh, suggestion up. Thanks a lot. Okay, let's go to the next question. What are the te te technical semiconductor engineer skills required for your career in design engineering skills? See, some of this I have covered that the front end design engine in design does require a person to have a good system level understanding. And uh, I, I was one of those. And in fact, I used to design boards using programmable arrays and then FPGAs, FPGAs, field programmable, you know, logic. And I used to do those and then I moved to semiconductor design. So I already had a good system level design experience. So front end, a front end of course is, is limited, limited number of jobs there. I think if you go beyond front end, there are more jobs in, in you know, the middle, middleware where you convert that into, you know, um, I mean, you do verification. I mean, the verification engineers are needed then fabrication engineers, layout engineers, all those 
I think most of these jobs require computer engineering skills. Computer engineering or electrical engineering. Electronics is another one. Electronics and communication. That was my degree. And then, of course, you have the microcode and the software. So there, you know, microcode typically is written in C, C++. Those kind of engineers and, and other system level software could be depending upon, you know, what kind of system you're designing, Python and one of those newer languages there. So those are the kind of uh, things will be required. So I'm told there are no more questions. So I think I'll, I'll kind of, uh, you know, end here by just giving you some tips that uh, if, I think to me, your level, your interest level should determine what you want to do in your life. I know for a number of years, we were all told that go for jobs which pay you well, right? Or which will help you get married to a, a good boy or a girl. I mean, as the case may be. But I think now times have changed. Now people are looking at uh, things which, which keep them excited, which keep them interested. Interest is the key. If you find yourself interested in these devices to solve the problems, you know, as an entrepreneur, I'm always fond of look at the problem, find a solution. Now, the solution may come in the form of a software, firmware, or hardware, chip design, or, or something else. I mean, you're putting some bunch of things together to solve that problem. Or it could be a business model, or it could be an operational model. So depending upon the problem you're looking at, right, I think the hardware side, if hardware as a solution interests you, you should definitely go for that. And of course, work a few years, gain some experience, and then do something on your own. That is what I can offer you. Thank you, friends. Till we meet again. Bye.